Cool. Uh, hey, everybody. I guess I'm on. <sighs> so I had to call my talk something, so I called it Who, What, When? Um, Human Readable Audit Reporting for Paper Trail. And a little background. Well, I guess this, <laughs> this is a lightning talk. You'll, you'll see why there's a little winky face there shortly. Um, about me, my name is Jason Densmore. I'm Dingus on all the things, Twitter, GitHub, Keybase. I work at a company called Hint uh, across the river in Vancouver. We're primarily a Ruby and React consultancy. Um, my day-to-day -day life, I pretty much spend it in a Rails 4.2 app that's a back office app and powers business. The business, the app is for primarily facilitates transactions between buyers and sellers and takes a percentage off of the transaction and has basically three different categories of users. They're representatives for the buyers, the sellers, and the business. And data tends to be shared between all three user types. There's very little data that belongs to uh, any single user. And as such, we're commonly asked who changed the data, what changed about it, and when did it change? Um, Lucky for us, there are a lot of awesome people that have contributed to a gem called Paper Trail. And one of the first things we did when we took on the project was to install Paper Trail. And that was kind of like, I don't know, the difference between BC and AD is kind of, from that moment, we had insight into how our data changed over time. Um, to set up Paper Trail, you basically just add it to your gem file. And you run a generator, uh, Rails generate Paper Trail install. And if you pass this with changes flag, it will add a column. Um, well, basically, the generator creates a migration, and the migration creates a table. And if you pass that flag, the table includes the object changes uh, column. So a little run through of the table. Um, basically, every version has an ID. It's polymorphic, so it has an item type that refers to the class the entry is for, the item ID for the ID of the entry, the event, which is usually create, update, or destroy, uh, who done it that points at the user that made the change, the object, which um, is typically a YAML serialized version of the object uh, before the changes were applied. So on create, object will be nil, and object changes basically contains the changes that were made to the object. Um, to start tracking model, it's really easy. Look on line 21 there, you just add uh, has paper trail, and you're, you're good to go. Um, before we move on to this next part, I should probably have a disclaimer. I'm going to talk about a couple things I know very little about, namely Greek deities and lightning. <laughs> so it turns out that Zeus got in on an early access program for Rails several hundred years ago, and he started tracking his uh, lightning strikes in his Rails app. So every version of Lightning that Zeus tracks has a name, because he likes to name things. It has an intensity that's 1 through 10. It has a charge, because apparently Lightning can either have a positive charge or a negative charge. Uh, bolt type, like cloud to cloud, cloud to ground, uh, intra-cloud, that sort of thing. Uh, strike at, when the bolt's scheduled to strike, and then typical timestamps. Um, this is to remind me to go to my demo. So there, Zeus is signed into his Lightning app, a typical use case here. And Zeus doesn't like intensities of one on his Lightning because it's kind of boring, and Zeus likes to bring the thunder with his Lightning. And he's pretty sure he didn't create it like that. So he doesn't have anything except for a paper trail at this point. So luckily, Zeus is pretty handy. He's a savvy developer. So he motors over to his Rails console. And he looks for his lightning bolt by name. There was a value of amp that changed in Zeus's researching how that got changed? Yep, okay. yep. So he's, he's trying to figure out why the intensity of amp changed. So he, he finds that lightning bolt, pretty easy. Um, and he's got paper trail now, so he can look at the versions of it. 
and it spews out a bunch of stuff. And Zeus kind of looks down. Doo -doo -doo. And you can see here that the lightning changed from a 10 to a 1. Um, and the whodunit is a 1. So he's got to go find who that user is. And it was Aphrodite. Dang it. So, I mean, that, that's all fine and great. And Paper Trail is awesome. But that's kind of a painful process, especially if you're having to look through a complex data history and you've got users breathing down your neck. And you have a microphone in your hand. Yeah, you've got a microphone in your hand. Um, ideally, people be able to, to just look at that information by themselves. And that's kind of where Paper Trail Scrapbook came from. It's a gem that I've worked on with one of my colleagues. And it basically extends Paper Trail. Um, you install it much the same way. You just include it in your gem, gem file. It does rely on that object changes column to be present in, in your Paper Trail version table. And it's got two modules. The first is life history. And that essentially shows a history for a given database object. There's an example usage of it there. You just put paper trail scrapbook life history dot new object and then you call the story method on it. Uh, the second module is user journal and that will show changes made by a user. Um, you can optionally scope, scope it to look for changes to a specific class uh, and or scope your, your inquiry to a time range. Um, so back to the demo. While we were looking at slides, Zeus went ahead and incorporated Paper Trail Scrapbook into his app. And now Hades is signed in. And Hades is also looking at the lightning table. And Hades gets really excited about lightning because lightning can cause death and destruction. And both of those things are great. And he notices that this juicy juice lightning bolt isn't scheduled to strike until the year 9,845. Uh, Hades is kind of impatient. He wants to know who changed that. It, it doesn't look consistent with the rest of the values. So he's got a little icon here. He hovers over it. And it says history. And he clicks on that. And he gets kind of a modal uh, showing the history for Juicy Juice. You can see that it was created in year 1519. Uh, several changes made to it. And if he starts kind of at the most recent changes at the bottom and works his way back up. Hey, it's Aphrodite again. Aphrodite! Um, so it turns out that it's fairly, it's fairly straightforward to integrate this into your application. Uh, we're going to take a look at how you might accomplish that. Um, basically, the syntax for the library is pretty verbose. So we just extend, or add a method to an application record here. And any model that has paper trail will have the story method available on it. So you can just call the model instance.story, and you'll, you'll get the story. Um, we also integrate it into the application helper, uh, history link for object. And you just pass it the object you want to link for. And it basically sets a couple of data, data attributes on the uh, link and includes the font awesome icon. Then the view, um, 931 there, we just include the history link for the object in our table. And 33 through 35, that's just kind of an empty modal I've got sitting on the page. Um, there's more than one way to populate a modal, so I'm not really going to go in, into depth about that. Um, and then we add a basically a controller to process these history inquiries, um, finds the object. Looks, generates a story for it if it's available. Otherwise, no history available. And then it returns some JSON. Um, you could render JavaScript here if you wanted or however you want to populate your modal. Um, that's basically it. Um, some resources. I've got a repo with the demo app in it, a uh, PDF of the slides. Um, I wrote a blog entry on this a while back. and. Thanks again to all the contributors of the Paper Trail. It's really an awesome gem that does a lot for you. And then the Paper Trail Scrapbook gem is available uh, on GitHub too.